centered in the Middle East. And even Russia has been e evacuating uh, their citizens. I'm not saying that I know this is this. We're heading toward Armageddon. I'm not saying that. Uh, but you could easily read what's going on there and you could fit that into a biblical and prophetic scenario. So I wouldn't want to discourage you from looking for those possible dynamics here. You know, Russia is evacuating its citizens from Syria. I mean, they're loading up. They're sending warships into the Mediterranean. Uh, they're sending other warships into the, the other side of, of Syria, whatever that is, the Gulf of whatever it is. And so they're loading up. They're tanking up. They're sending uh, naval resources into that region to match what the United States is sending in there. So that's obviously a potential powder keg. They think things could get bad. They, they think things could get so bad that they're actually evacuating their own citizens from Syria because they think that things could blow up. And Jeff, if I could bring you back in just for a second, uh, you know, Jeff is somebody that monitors what's going on with Israel. He's got a deep love for the Israeli people, as we all do here. And, you know, and one of the things that Jeff is kind of under, kind of addressed here is the possible implications for Israel yeah. in, in, in all of this. And, and what do you see as, uh, I mean, nobody's really talking about this, but you and I have chatted about it. What's the possible what are the possible implications here for the land of Israel? Well, the first thing that strikes is that people have to remember it wasn't that long ago that Obama has been leaking out security secrets from Israel. That definitely causes a problem for him. But uh, putting all the politics aside and looking at this kind of simply, um, it really what we're seeing is it kind of look at it like there's two brothers fighting in the front yard, and that would be Syria, the civil war. Um, you have somebody coming in, like the United States, trying to break up the fight. So in response, what do the two brothers do? They attack the innocent bystander on the street, <laughs> who would be Israel. He's just some and, kind of passerby. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Now, uh, you've got the, uh, the big kid on the block, probably down the road a little bit. Uh, the nation of e Iran wants to come in and, and punch the big... The, the, the innocent bystander as well. It just does not make sense. Well, and, uh, you know, Israel shares a border with Syria. That's what the Golan Heights is, is all about. So they're a neighbor to Syria. So uh, the, the thought that this somehow could be contained if Syria goes up in flames. In yeah. fact, I'm looking at a story here. A senior Syrian military official, this is from The Blaze, says if the U.S. or a coalition of nations attacks Syrian government forces, Syria and its allies will launch an immediate attack on Israel, which is just fits exactly into that kind of scenario that you painted for us of two brothers fighting in the front yard. The Syrian army official said this, if Damascus comes under attack, Tel Aviv will be targeted to and a full-scale war against Syria will actually issue a license for attacking uh, Israel. And they say, we're going to set Tel Aviv on fire. That's a direct quote. We're going to set Tel Aviv uh, on fire. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, that, that's, I, I think, a dimension to all of this that, that we're not talking about. I don't think we have any personal national security interests involved in Syria, but Israel obviously does. And if we intrude in Syria, Jeff, it could be bad news for Israel. Oh, absolutely. And and you have to think about this, too. I mean, the dynamics of the Middle East have changed drastically within, uh, well, basically since the uh, the, the um, Arab Spring. I mean, you, the border at the south with Egypt is now, that, that nation's on um, on fire. You have the Hezbollah in, in Lebanon, and they've shown a, a propensity to attack Israel with rockets. You've got Syria going. I mean, the only border that they have whatsoever that is, is uh, reasonably quiet is with Jordan. But I think uh, if you go a little farther to the, uh, to the east, you'll find uh, Iran will make up for that. All right, Jeff, listen, I appreciate your perspective on that. So, you know, and again, President Obama, was a soundbite I didn't get a chance to play the other day. It was in the queue, but we just ran out of time to play it. And he was listing all of our allies in the region. And the last one he mentioned was Israel, almost like an, it was an afterthought. Let's grab one more call before the break. Let's go to Tom. Tom, welcome to Focal Point. If we can grab Tom and bring him in, welcome. What's on your mind? Hey, Brian. Uh, glad to know. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. What's uh, on your mind? Just real, real quick, I heard you say about 80% of our Congress people 
want you know want to have a, you know want to do this with Obama, you know want to have be able to approve what's going on in Syria. Yeah, and this is eighty percent of the American people. Eighty percent of the American people do not. This is an NBC poll. Do not think President Obama should take unilateral action in Syria without congressional authorization. Anyway, go ahead. Okay, okay so my, my question is, I know, I know David Barton as he is out here. I wish I knew somebody even half of this information. But wouldn't it be uh, possible for our Congress people, just so many of them, just to show up there in Washington and actually call their own session and say, hey, Obama, you've got to come talk to us now about this. We're having a session, and we'd like to have a vote on this. It's, well, yeah, it, yeah, and that could happen, Tom, and I appreciate the call. And some people have been urging John Boehner to do that. Call Congress back into session. Call the House of Representatives back into session and, and debate what we ought to do um, about Syria. So, uh, you know, and um, Rand Paul, we'll play that soundbite uh, after the next break, but Rand, or after the next segment, Rand Paul is saying, look, if Obama goes to war in Syria without Congress, that is an illegal act. Back with Caden Calvert. Stay with us.